So as you know, in camps and in, in, in combines these days, the kids are being faced with, with the broad jump. And I think this is an awesome movement to express horizontal power, your true horizontal power. You're basically taking your body and seeing from distance A to distance B how far you could jump out. I think some of the best right now, like in the NFL combine, is like some outrageous number close to like 11.8 eight or 11.4 or something, something by some wide receiver. But, um, you know, I have guys, and it's not just football anymore. You know, it used to be guys, they, they, they jump this, and it's a matter of million dollars or, you know, losing that contract, how far you jump. But uh, you, you see in high school kids faced in you know, baseball, basketball, I got guys coming to me in, in many different sports, and they're testing them this type of movement. So uh, first things first, a lot of things that I like to do before we actually jump. Um, I, I call these primers. What I want them to do is two stretches. First and foremost, we want to be able to get full extension on our jump. What inhibits us from doing that is something like tight hip flexors or tight abdominals. So usually right before they're getting ready to set up for this jump, I like them to do a lunge pose, okay? And hold that lunge pose, really put those hip flexors on stretch and kind of deaden that nervous system, release that tension from that area. Right after that, I like to go into a McKenzie press up. Now the McKenzie press up is gonna really stretch the abdominals. It's gonna allow you to put your body in a position that when you jump, you can mimic that same stretch. Um, after that, it's obviously shown that when uh, your second jump is gonna be your more explosive jump. So your first jump, think about just turning your nervous system on, firing as fast as possible. Your second jump is your bread and butters, where we're gonna actually go ahead and start increasing your inches and your numbers. So typically what I like guys to do before they set up for their jump is to actually go to the side, jump one big one, and really get their nervous system firing. Now when it comes to the actual test, um, I like them to, you know, line up, toes right on the line, feet shoulder width apart. I think this is very important. I think guys like to go too narrow or too wide. If we get them right underneath our shoulders, this is going to express the greatest power they can. It's going to create a best mechanical advantage. The next thing I need them to get involved with is the, uh, is the arms. With their arms, you, as you always hear me say, uh, longer lever equals more power. I want them to forcefully, both hands, explode them down. Soon as they clear the hip, they're able to collapse their torso. You know, that's the, the chest to the knees, bend down, swing them back up as forcefully as possible. And soon as they clear the hip, I want your hips to extend and follow your hands. So, so as I have them forcefully throwing their arms back and their torso collapsing, I want them to consciously, like, oh, oh, imagine you pushing your feet through the ground, okay? And then as we're doing this, I want you to start to think about squeezing your glutes as hard and as forcefully as you can once you clear to basically extend your hips as quickly and as powerfully as possible to shoot out. A good cue that I like to use with some of my kids is I like them to picture that their belly button or rib cage, if you will, is shooting out at a 45 degree angle. When they're shooting out at a 45 degree angle, we're ensuring that they're getting proper height and depth. So they're not just shooting straight out. I want them to get some height so they can crawl into those extra inches. After they're out there, they're expanding their chest. And at the last moment, the landing is the biggest part. You see, I, I think a lot of guys leave a lot of inches on the table when they, when they basically land with their head over their feet. If you think about it, if your, hand, if your head is over your feet, you could be able to actually bring your body, position your torso more back and land with your legs out in front of you a little more and stick that landing. So really what I want them to do is at the last minute, sweep the legs, quickly flex the hips and land in a low squat position. Now this is gonna take some technique, but as soon as you land this, I mean, you're talking about a, a, almost a foot. The proper landing could actually end up in you having the, that extra foot. After you stick the landing, you know in almost every camp these days, the biggest thing is, is uh, you can't pit pat. You can't land forward, you can't step backwards. 
this in my actual combine my first two ones i scratched because i had so much power out the gate i was just i was touching i was pit padding and uh, i need to redo it again and it really started messing with my mind so the biggest thing you need to practice before you go into that is sticking that landing and being able to statically hold that for a second i like guys to be actually be able to pause in that landing position and hold it there for for a five count because really what that's going to train them to do is be able to hold it off and really focus on sticking that landing now as far as training for this test we can look at it one or two different ways. It depends on the time frame you have. I always look at it like I look at any athlete. We have, if you have say five months, two, three months, something like that, uh, we're gonna look, wanna look at it one way. Either you need to increase your absolute strength or you need to increase your rate of force development. If you just don't have a motor back there, you're not squatting, you've never really been strong, I wanna increase your absolute strength, okay? I wanna get your squat numbers up, your deadlift numbers up, your hang clean numbers up, and I really want you to focus on increasing that number and we'll see you express a, a stronger broad jump. If you have always been a strong person but seem to can't get any power out of you, what I wanna focus on is that rate of force development. And this is exactly how it sounds. I wanna take that movement from a static position and move it concentrically as fast as possible. So this is gonna include whether it be seated box jumps, we can do a speed squat, we can do a speed trap bar deadlift, we can also lower the weight and do speed cleans. Anything that will get that forceful, quick hip extension. If you're, if you're looking at it a day, two days, a week, a month before, really what I wanna focus on is the technique. I really seen kids that actually come to me and say, okay, I, I have this this Saturday. I have the National Underclassman Combine this Saturday. I need to increase my broad jump as much as I can in these seven days. So what really I'm gonna focus on is catching their rhythm with their arms, make sure they're fully extending the hips, and then they're being able to land properly. I've seen guys who jump a, a, a eight foot, I know they're powerful enough for a 10, I get their rhythm down, I get their technique down, and I'm able to increase that 10 foot, you know, get, get within nine seven to, to 10 one or something like that. There you have it. I think this is like one of the best movements for expressing your true horizontal power. You're gonna see more of this and you're gonna see guys getting better and better and better, raising the bar each year. So really I think a big thing is correct your technique, even if it's a day before you have to do it. Focus on the little things that you need or your weaknesses and you can actually expand yourself a couple inches, put yourself ahead of the game within a 24 hour period.